What do you do if you live in a place where your money is suddenly worth almost nothing? And every day, because of wild inflation, it's worth even less. Here is a billion dollar bill from Zimbabwe. This bill is a 100 trillion dollar bill. Yet this isn't even worth a penny today. Venezuelans don't yet have a currency that's that worthless, this worthless, but their money shrinks in value every hour. Businesses don't even want to take the local currency. So what do some people do to survive? They use Bitcoin. Bitcoins are transferred directly from person to person via the net. Sending Bitcoins is as simple as sending an email. And you can purchase anything with Bitcoin. Okay, I get it. This is complicated. How can I on this TV show possibly explain this abstract currency? Well, let's turn to Bitcoin Girl. What? Well, that video was made by one of my producers before I hired her. She worked for the New York Bitcoin Center. That's Naomi Brockwell. Welcome. Are you embarrassed watching this now? <laughs> that is not the cheesiest Bitcoin video I've made, actually. Well, before we talk about that, to connect this to hyperinflation in Venezuela, we'll go first to Reason Magazine reporter Jim Epstein, who went to Latin America to observe how people use Bitcoin to survive. So, how? There is a growing community of Venezuelans who are using Bitcoins to buy food from Amazon.com and Walmart. But how do they get it? There are all these import bans. There is a whole industry of courier services in Miami that bring, basically you have your Amazon package shipped to their warehouse in Miami and they bring it over in a boat or a plane and deliver it right to your door. And bribe the police? Uh, they are expert at getting the goods into through Venezuelan customs. It's very doable though. There are many firms that are doing this. Okay, Naomi. Bitcoin, what is it? It's a currency that the government can't control, so it's incredibly valuable for people, especially those in Venezuela, who have a you know, dictatorial regime. I think that a lot of Americans dismiss it because we just don't have as much corruption in our, our government. Though, I must say, I bought some, and it's my best investment. It's gone up in value <laughs> from $100 to $700. And I bet you w wish that you bought more. But that's the point. It's in the U.S., it's people like you or the two of us that will buy Bitcoin and be interested in Bitcoin. But in Venezuela, they're using Bitcoin because it's practical. It's putting it's food in their, in their cabinets. And one reason it's practical is they can mine their own Bitcoins because of a another stupid government subsidy? That's right. They're turning socialism against itself, which is that mining for bitcoins is a process, in effect, where you turn your electricity into currency. And here you might not make much money at all doing that because electricity is expensive. In Venezuela, the socialist government basically doesn't charge for electricity. So what these Venezuelan Bitcoin miners have discovered, that if you buy uh, from China often a special computer, you can hide it in your bedroom, it's almost like a money mint. It's just generating this currency that you can then take and actually the buy real solve things. problems and that. They're running rapid computations. In America, right. because we have real prices, it might not be affordable for people. In Venezuela, it's easy. And Naomi, you say that compared to these, Bitcoin is a way to escape government. What do you mean? Well, definitely. Bitcoin is a currency that isn't controlled by government at all, so you're able to skirt regulations with it. Now, in America, you see people using Bitcoin on the black market because they can escape regulation. You see them buying mainly drugs. But in Venezuela, these people are also escaping regulation, but their black market consists of groceries, of basic medicine, of things for their survival. It's currency that runs on the internet. It doesn't run through the bank or your credit card company. And that's how government controls currency, through the banking system, through the traditional financial system. With Bitcoin, you don't need the traditional financial system. So it's almost impossible to stop. Yeah, and right now, I mean, you see the Venezuelan government, they put a cap on the amount of money people can access from their own bank accounts. That's their own money. But the government How much said, they can withdraw exactly, per day. Exactly. They can only access $5 of that. But if you had all your money in Bitcoin, you'd be able to access all of your money at any any time. A commercial for Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Epstein and Naomi Brockwell.